Well, hello people, what's going on? My name is Bergman, and today we're going to be talking a little bit about the Battlefield 1 Closed Alpha. I've been playing this for the past week or so, so far. I already got myself a little 15 to 20 hours on the game, and I've been having a blast with it, but I haven't made a commentary telling you exactly what I've been enjoying about this game. The good things, the bad things, and a couple of little concerns here and there. So let's get into it. Okay, so after like 15, 20 hours of playing on the same map over and over and over again, I'm not bored of the map so far, which is good. That's a fucking great sign. Uh, the map is called St. Quentin Scar, and I believe it is varied enough to hold your attention to play many, many, many hours on. It's probably going to be one of the favoured maps of the game once the game actually comes out. All six of the map's flags are very different from each other, extremely varied in their design, and you can kind of tell that this map has been made with, uh, with by actual uh, map designers as opposed to just graphical artists like the last couple of games. I did hear that at one point that some of Battlefield 4's maps, if not all of Battlefield 4's maps, were designed by people that just wanted to make them look cool as opposed to function well. So far I can say with this game, it looks like it was designed by people that know how to design maps, which is always a plus, I guess. And uh, at the same time as that, it still looks cool because it nails the setting of World War One really, really well. Apart from the fact, of course, that you're in a village as opposed to being in trenches, but you don't want to just be in trenches all the fucking time, because that would, that would get boring. With the six flags on the map during conquest mode, there's enough variation between all of the different little bases to keep gameplay interesting. A couple of the flags have um, uphill, downhill battles, and you need to try and use cover to move up a very steep surface. And there's other sections of the map that's in a huge valley when you're in the actual village itself. And every building is accessible, of course, with this being Battlefield, so you can maneuver around the map really, really quickly. And even if vehicles do turn up, there's enough places to hide to get away from them. Because that was always one of the kind of problems with some of the bigger maps in Battlefield 4. For example, like Gallman Railway. I mean, Gallman Railway is a good map. It's, it's one of the better ones. But at the same time, there was too many places on the map where... If a tank rolled up, which there was plenty of on that map, you were pretty much screwed if you were on foot and you're running around, tank shows up, no cover, you're a dead man. So even when you're out in the open in this game, there are random pieces of debris, you could even blow a hole in the ground and hide in that. It's um, it's just much better balanced. So that's enough about the map, let's talk about the weapons in this game and the class system so far. Now not every feature of class modification and customization and all that stuff is available as of yet it's just a few preset weapons that they've already laid out for us to use so far but you can't mix and match all the different scopes and sights and all that stuff not yet at least anyway in this alpha because it is a pretty early build of the game but what they did give us was a sort of little sample of uh, what you can kind of expect uh, from the class system once the game does drop. So what they've given us so far, as many of you have probably seen already, is the Assault class, which comes with SMGs and shotguns, and uh, you have some uh, little grenades. And how the hell did I miss that guy with the bayonet charge? I got really lucky there was another guy just sitting there ready to be stabbed, but, you know, he ended up getting plugged in the ground, but somehow I missed that first guy. But yeah, the Assault class, it just comes with some close-range weaponry with uh, some anti-tank elements, such as a rocket gun, as well as as um, anti-tank grenades and stuff like that. So you have close range uh, sort of anti-armor um, weaponry there with uh, the anti-tank grenades are really, really powerful, even against the heavy tanks. Now, there's a couple of different class types of tanks as well, but um, you have enough firepower there, and you can even take extra grenades. Instead of taking a normal grenade, you can take another anti-tank grenade with you, so you're pretty much uh, stocked to the teeth to take out any armor that comes your way if you can get close enough. The support class is pretty much as you'd expect. You've got an LMG, you've got some ammo, and you can just pretty much help support your teammates and keeping an assault going. LMGs themselves, not so great though. They're, they're okay, they do their job. It seems that the longer you hold down the button to fire them, the more accurate they get, which is a bit weird because that means there's a whole bunch of bullets you're firing at someone that are inaccurate as hell. So it, it kind of is a bit weird when you want to take down targets. Talking about the previous class I was just talking about just there, when it comes to SMGs in this game, they seem so wildly inaccurate, which kind of expect especially with a fully automatic weapon back in world war one especially when there were very early concepts for uh, smgs and guns like that but i honestly just 
don't like using them whatsoever. It just seems that more often than not, coming up against someone that's at sort of medium range, or even sometimes kind of close range, I can unload a whole clip of bullets, a whole magazine of bullets into a guy, and he somehow still manages to get away with like a couple of HP health left, so that's kind of infuriating. So that's why you see me using one of the other classes in most of the clips today, which is the Scout class. The reason I've been using this is I feel it's the most reliable. You know exactly what you're going to get with a bolt action sniper rifle. So it's extremely powerful when you hit them in the chest or in the head, it's an instant kill. And you've also got a good little array of gadgets to help you out when you're just, you know, moving up and trying to take people on at close range, such as this guy here who gets spaded right in the neck. So not only have you got your rifle itself, you've got the bayonet on there, which is very useful when it comes to trying to use this thing at close range. If you can try and dupe someone into coming around a corner uh, as you try and bait him around, you can just charge out when he's not expecting it and just stab the guy right in his fucking face. It is so satisfying when you manage to pull this off. As well as having that, you've also got a pistol, you've also got a flare gun that can uh, spot any enemies in the close proximity around the flag. It's very useful for scouting out a flag. And um, you've also got some anti-armor bullets that only do a small amount of damage to any light armor that's around. But if you're piling pressure onto a tank that's ended up getting caught out by a lot of your teammates, then it is a welcome little addition to the class. You can just contribute that little bit extra damage that might be enough to blow up that tank or just disable it or whatever and enable your teammates to take it down. The one class I've not touched on is the medic and that's pretty standard. The, the rifles themselves I've not felt are entirely reliable, at least I'm not great with them. So I'll try and get some more footage with that. What well, it is just here, flying the bomber. How unlucky is this guy? Just smashes into me and flies off and then I end up just jumping right down and making an epic entrance onto the F flag. So uh, that, that happened. Battlefield 1 is totally realistic, you know. <laughs> Paying attention to this one other little clip, just hear me hiding in a bush trying to be a bush monster and uh, sniping some people off. I take this guy out that was just crawling around on the ground. And then I spot this uh, mine, this guy's nice and carefully laid out right next to himself for whatever reason. And I just blow him into a million pieces. So that's, that's fucking great. He just decided, you know, I'm going to help this guy out and I'm going to put a mine at my own feet because that's smart. I don't know if he put that there or someone else did, but either way, spawning into this point here and destroying a guy who was flying up behind me does make for an epic scene. Like I said at the start of this video, this game nails the atmosphere of playing an actual battlefield title on and a real life battlefield. It is amazing. And I've got to give props to DICE, once again like I've done in the past, for their sound design. Their sound design in the game is incredible. I think this is actually where it's been its strongest in the Battlefield franchise so far is uh, in this particular game. It just, it sounds so chaotic. You can hear gunfire explosions and all sorts going off in the distance while anything localized to yourself uh, just sounds really meaty and just everything is so loud. It's like playing Bad Company 2 with war tapes um, audio design. Like if you know, guys know what I'm talking about with that, it's kind of like that. It kind of sounds a little bit better than that if I got to um, make a comparison there. And uh, I think largely that's just down to them beefing up the weapon sounds. Like if you're firing a powerful rifle, it sounds like you're firing a powerful rifle and it's so satisfying to just take someone's head off with a nice sniper rifle shot. Once again, going to the clip here, how do you do this? How do you use the iron sights on the sniper rifle? I've been trying to figure out for days now. I even tried Googling it and everything, trying to figure out how you switch the iron sights instead of using the scope. It seems it might be buggy. I might just not know what I'm doing. So someone leave me a comment down below and just tell me how you do that. So yeah, just let me know which key that is. But the main thing that I've seen people voicing concerns about with this game so far is um, are the tanks and armor way too powerful on the map? No, personally, I disagree. I don't think they are too powerful. A lot of people have been saying that they feel they're just overpowered as fuck. I don't see it that way. I see that there's so many things that can take down a tank. You need to be on edge all the time. You can't just go steamrolling into a flag, expect to kill 10 guys, and then just roll off with the flag and be totally fine. It doesn't work like that. I mean, infantry can throw grenades at you that do a lot of damage. You can get shot by rocket guns. You can get bombed by a random plane you did not see coming. If the Zeppelin comes in and starts targeting you, you're pretty much screwed. Um, if another tank shows up and you're sitting there trying to repair and getting pummeled by all sorts of shit, you're pretty much screwed. 
and also if you can get hit by an artillery gun that you're just not paying attention to, which are dotted around the map, you can also get screwed very, very quickly. So, I don't see them as being overpowered. You need to be careful. You don't just roll in like a fucking madman. They are, of course, powerful, though. The tanks are very powerful, but... You just need to try and be smart when using them. But yeah, that's enough for now. I hope you guys enjoyed the little video. If you've been playing the game so far, leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on it and also what your thoughts are of what you've seen on YouTube. I'm going to leave you with an epic little scene of me being chased by a tank. See you guys next time. Goodbye. We have lost objective butter.